Take it, someone. Okay. Hey, everyone. This is the official podcast coming in at episode 253. Jackson has something incredible to share with us. He was just absolutely going wild yeah, before this recording. This is just so fucking incredible. I have breaking news that Charlie immediately got the episode wrong. It's 252, <laughs> not 253. But that was incredible. Thank you, Charlie, for giving me the opportunity to fact check you live on air. Uh, yeah, thank you. Wow, you are really getting very petty already because of this. Is petty. it because of the competition? Yeah, wow. you're like fact checking up so <laughs> yeah. very good. Just because you can't beat me at achievement hunting, my <laughs> well, how oh. do you think I felt? How do you think I felt when I woke up this morning, checked Charlie's YouTube uh, account, and the first video was a 10 minute uh, ad hominem attack on me uh, about my achievement hunting prowess? You slandered me, good sir, in the public court of opinion. Well, and I will not have it. No, uh, the. Uh, Best defense against slander is absolute truth, which is all I spit during <laughs> that video. You know, I went back uh, on the achievement, like looking through our achievements, and I figured out the reason why my achievement score is much lower than yours. First of all, it's not it's not low anyway. Like you've got a pretty insane <laughs> achievement score to begin with. One hundred ten thousand is nothing to sneeze at, so that's pretty impressive. Uh, Jackson's but- like, it's not small, and women don't care about size anyway. <laughs> Well, I also think it's important before you continue with your horrible point that we remember that this is from over a decade. I was complimenting your score then. (laughs) No, no, you're sounding stupid. (laughs) It's it's important to remember I I achieved this over a decade ago, so you you have to account for inflation these days with gamer score. Yes, I see. see. Back when games were easier. Yeah, so basically 117,000 back in 2011 is like 2 million by today's economy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't keep up with the uh, yeah conversion rates or whatever, so you're probably correct. Um, but also, you stopped around, from what I understand, you stopped around 2016. That was when the last like achievement popped for you, apparently, according to the, the records. But my account only began in 2014. So you went so. from you went from 2005 through to 2000 and I think it was 15ish 2015 so you had about 10 years of time to amass achievements I've had only 6 Where did you get yeah, Jackson, we've from? Been, it's, it's, I, I just it's not it's not Charlie's fault you're like 17 no. it, Stop going over ancient history Jackson and just tell us who's in the lead right now Currently I am in the lead Ooh. He's uh, he's yeah, he's been playing some shitty indie games. I am very. Why close does to, that matter? This I is a competition. Close, it's about quality. I am very close <laughs> to maxing out Bayonetta, which is a great game. Yeah, so you. You're, so, you so all right, boys. He's not treating this as a competition, and that makes me take pity <laughs> on him. So I'm not even trying my full hardest yet. <laughs> That's that's my issue with this. You're just using it to go back and play fun games that you actually want to play. I'm playing stinkers. Oh no, that sounds so terrible of him, Jackson. But th- th- it's a competition. Yeah. Yeah, Jackson's here to win. Yeah, yeah Jackson it's a competition. I mean, in any corner. other competition, Charlie would go his hardest. I don't know why he's stopping now. Can I bet on you? I mean, you can. I'm if betting you on want. Jackson. Okay, I'm gonna bet ten dollars. That's it. Well, not even. I'll buy you a cola, I guess, if you win. Yeah, so I am pretty comfortable with uh, my current lead, but I've slowed down and now I'm starting to play games that I actually want to play, like uh, Lost Judgment as well as Skyrim. Trying to 100% Skyrim at the moment. Uh, That's pretty brutal. And Charlie seems to be going for older games like Bayonetta, I think he was currently playing. Yeah. Um, What's your progress like on that? I just need to beat it one more time on hard, and I should be able to wipe everything. Okay. Ugh. But I have to beat it All twice, because right. then I have to beat it on infinite climax mode. <laughs> so, Charlie and I have this achievement hunting um, competition. Maybe Andrew and Kaya need a competition to go on through the side. Mm-hmm. Ooh. We'll have to... Uh, mm. Let's see, who can listen to more audiobooks? In a week. <laughs> mm, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that does sound awful. Yeah, would nothing we, that would requires my, effort. Yeah, would, would Jackson's equivalent of that be just listening to brochures and advertising, I guess? Knock yeah. out 10 audiobooks in a minute. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, plus there's no way to track audiobooks listen to. I, I'm sure there is. I'm sure Audible or we something. We can give a book report on each of them. Oh, okay. I'm down to give book reports. Oh, what? Hmm. Andrew, do you have an absolute favorite audiobook that you've listened to? Uh, probably Girl with the Seven Names. It's a good true story about a girl who flees North Korea and fucks over her entire family doing it. It's not like awesome. a bitch. Yeah. Do she was, like, she a jerk. A, was she a hero for the Concentration camp? Uh, absolutely not. She was a fucking selfish <laughs> monster because the only reason she did it... <laughs> The only reason she did it in the first place was she was like, I like China so much more from when I visited. I think I'll just stay there. So, <laughs> and, uh, oops, it did. Uh, North Korea doesn't like that. How does she know what happened to her family? Did she like stay in touch like a douche to gloat and send them mm, cards? Like, hey, no, hi well, from no, the better no, side no, of the border. No, see, it was the actual opposite. She got a desperate panic phone call from her brother who was like, you don't realize Aww. what you've done. Aww. Aww. Yeah, <laughs> that's depressing. It was it was depre it was a depressing book, but I uh, it was also really harrowing. It was a very it, like gripping tale. I got really invested. So it wasn't like she was malicious or anything. She was struggling. No, she with her was only decision. she was only like fifteen when she did it. So she was just a dumb teenage kid. Like that thing probably happens in North Korea, obviously. But like, was this based on a true story or was it pure fiction? It's an entirely true story. It's narrated by the woman who did it. Oh, what the, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she is today a, a human rights advocate and a spokesperson against North Korea. And she tours oh, around nice doing over. conferences and talking about her book and shit. Talking about her mom who was drawn and quartered back at home. Because I'm of not going to spoil anything. <laughs> okay, fair you, enough. You'll love chapter eight, though. <laughs> Cha yeah, chapter six is a real page turner wink is every is every chapter just a family member that got decapitated because of her <laughs> i was i was gonna uh, say can you hear why don't you read it and find out kaya listen to it well maybe uh, i'll listen to it instead it's actually really good i do recommend it so i was going to say like could you hear the animosity in the person who was reading it voice like <laughs> did they disagree with the decision but now that's like complicated matters now that it was her you know her she story. for a woman who grew up in one of the most terrifying countries on earth and like has lived a life of pure turbulence and fighting she is really calm and soft-spoken there is really not a lot of anger in how she talks i'm surprised well, yeah, she's she basically escaped hell. That's got to be super chill. Like mm -hmm. a really like when you come out of a cold shower and everything feels cozy. <laughs> it's got to be very relaxing. Yeah, I feel like... roughly the same as that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Relating this person's horrible story about how she uh, had to watch her family be like tortured mm. and stuff, and then and leave her country. Oh yeah, yeah she clearly suffered so much. I'm just saying, when I get out of the shower, <laughs> nobody shoots my mom. <laughs> All right, I leave far fewer wi victims. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a pretty fucked experience. I, I obviously started listening to it because of my obsession with the real world comic book supervillain known as North Korea, and uh, the things she describes having to do as a kid in that country are they're fucked up. Like they they apparently uh, like I, I learned this from this book. Um, they will apparently just pull children out of school and force them to watch public executions. Oh my like you'll, god, that's awesome. Like you'll be you'll be in the middle of school, even as young as like fourth grade. And they'll be like, okay, kids, another another terrible dissenter has been caught. Okay, everyone, a, another traitor to the government has been found. It's time to watch him get executed. And they will just pull you out of school and make you watch, and then you go right back to recess or whatever you were doing. Does anyone okay, ask where due process is? Where's the proof of the crime? <laughs> no, because then they get shot too. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot how it works. <laughs> I, look, are you really going to tell me you wouldn't love being pulled out of school for fucking execution, medieval style, like in the movies? That's awesome. That's like Mad Max realm. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think it's that awesome would not for be a awesome to live in. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. Andrew, did Mad you Max see is the fun new to photos watch. of... Yeah, and you would be watching it cool 
execute well I, I guess i don't know if their executions are cool or anything yeah it'd be depend Maybe well it'd be depend on how they're executed like if they like walk up and just shoot them i'd be like eh, that's kind of lame but if they like and if it's like you're running over a bunch of children just get pulled out like this woman's daughter escaped the country <laughs> Yeah, pretty brutal. Uh, did you see Kim Jong Un lost a bunch of weight, and then the media was swooning over him? Oh no! Like two no weeks I didn't. Or so ago. Oh, My buddy Kim's doing like, good. Yeah, he lost like thirty pounds or something. He looks way way healthier. Um, and the media was all over his dick about how handsome and healthy he looks now. He had a glow up. Wow! No, I didn't see this. Oh, he's yeah, looking trim. Look. Up. He's not a little plump meatball anymore. He's got like a boxy look to him. Good for him. He looks younger. He, he looks does. like a K-pop star almost. Well, he's he's fairly young. I think he's only in his mid thirties. Let me what? check. Oh, oh. Yeah. Damn, that makes me feel like an underachiever. Yeah, he's that motherfucker is running a whole country. He's only thirty-seven. <laughs> There's still time, Kim. You can still <laughs> join BTS or whatever it is you're wanting to do. Still be the ladies' man you wanted to be, <laughs> or us. <laughs> Uh, he looks so official happy. podcast. Yeah, I mean, I would be happy too if everybody in the country just served me and was scared of every. You know, you know what his face. Took. You know what his face looks like. There, it's, it's the face of a boy who just got uh, dragged out of school for a public execution. Looks <laughs> 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 so cheerful. Uh, uh, he just looks like Agent Eric Cartman, <laughs> like in soul as in body. It is a jerk. He's a precocious little scamp. He just gets into all sorts of misadventures. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's talk about the main topic here. Oh, yeah. That we're all so excited about. Yes. Uh, who wants to uh, break who the wants news? To introduce it? Yeah. I, feel I like don't should... know. I don't know about you guys, but I think Chris Pratt is just so cool. I think he's, he's so also cool. so cool. So cool. He's just yeah. so fucking so cool. cool. And don't take my word for he's it. He's a fun actor. That is the official quote from Shingeru Miyamoto. For those of you out there listening, maybe you've been away on vacation. Maybe you've been in North Korea and writing a book about it. Who knows? But <laughs> the official cast of the Super Mario Brothers movie made by the team that made Minions has been oh announced. My good. And I'll, I'll oh go ahead God. and go through this one by one and we can talk about each role if you guys want. I think that'd be yeah, a good sure. idea. So oh Christ. starring role, main attraction, the Italian plumber himself is Chris Pratt. What do we think of that? Yep. I think it's great. I'm a little disappointed they didn't choose me, but overall, I couldn't be happier they chose Chris. <laughs> you know what? I'm so sick of Chris Pratt being typecasted as small Italian men. It's tiring. Well, that's that's the big question I have about this yeah. movie. Is Chris Pratt going to have an Italian accent, or is it just going to be Chris Pratt doing Chris Pratt? Hmm. It, it, the Mario, uh, like, stereotypical Mario voice is so stereotypical. It kind of feels... Mm -hmm. It feels wrong if he's going to do that. <laughs> it feels Not great. Uh, well, it, it's barely been announced. You're already canceling him. He <laughs> yeah. looks so bad. Like I woke up from like a nap or something. I saw these photos of the cast and it looked fan made. Like the just even the headshots <laughs> yeah. are so bad. Yeah. Like they just Googled the names and put the labels on top of them. I and feel uh, like, yeah, that's, like uh, that's like Nintendo's entire, um, what do you call those? The tree, not tree houses. What are they? Nintendo Live? Directs? Directs. Nintendo Direct. Direct. Uh, yeah, yeah. Directs. They're, 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 like their direct production look is always so like, it looks like a fan put it together. It, it never yeah. really impresses me. The <laughs> Directs so have this sloppy. really strange kind of, I, I, I don't know, amateurish quality to them, yeah. which I think they're trying to come off as like sincere and endearing, but it more feels... Kind of like half-assed a lot of the time. No, it feels like it was made by the executives who don't know how to turn on a computer. Like they open up Power, PowerPoint or something and just throw it together. Yeah, it really does look like a fucking PowerPoint. My mm -hmm. God. Yeah. Right, continue um, with the cast, I suppose. All right. So next up would be Anya Taylor-Joy as Princess Peach. And I'm going to be honest, out of the cast, I have no idea who this is. That's the Me girl neither. from uh, Queen's Gambit. No, I have not heard of that. Queen's Gambit. It's a Netflix chess movie. Yeah, oh. she, that was a huge oh. movie. I'm surprised you haven't heard of it. I'm not surprised you haven't seen it, but surprised you haven't heard of it at least. No. So she sucks. That's a shame. No, uh, what? No, that movie was really. Uh, yeah, the show no, was she, really she good. Was great. 
she was mm-hmm. great in it. I don't know how mm. she'll go with Peach, but I think th- out of all of the casting decisions here, that's the one I'm most fine with. Like, that's yeah, it doesn't matter to me that one. <laughs> well, apparently that show uh, that show really nailed it because the woman it's based off of is suing the show. No, it's not based off of any woman. The woman that's suing them <laughs> is because they mentioned her one time and they kind of like belittled her achievements. Oh. Yeah, it's not based off of anyone. It's a completely fictional character. They just mentioned a real world chess player who got I upset. I see. Yeah. Hey, I'm reading headlines here, so don't quote me <laughs> on this petty. show. Oh, well. So that's yeah. Peach. Uh, next Peach, this uh, is an animated, just animated movie, right? These are all voice actors. Yeah, all yeah, of so this. That begs the question yeah, why don't yeah. they get the, like, okay. well, I, I assume the original well, Mario I voice mean, actor is look, dead. No, Charles Martinet is the original voice actor, and he's, and he's in, in the movie. Oh my god, that makes it even worse. Why, why yeah. are they just using him? So I, I completely understand it. I completely understand why Charles Martinet is not voicing the entire thing. Because number one, he would voice like half the cast. And number mm. two, if the movie is about standard fare for a children's movie, so an hour and a half... I don't know how enjoyable it would be to just hear random Italian gibberish for that long for a plot. Yeah, I agree. You know? Also, they, number three, Jackson, they don't pick them for merits. They pick them for the sake of putting Chris Pratt on the posters. Yeah, yeah. Brand, brand, they, 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 they want to make money. To appeal right. to, like, the, yeah. the core audience. So like, if, this is, if this is going the way of, like, actual in-depth plot that requires dialogue and character interaction, then I understand them hiring <laughs> giant celebrities, but... If they went a more kind of like mass international appeal, you know, not really scripted or dialogue heavy cartoon, then I could see them doing Charles Charles's Italian babbling for the whole film. So he, here's the th- here's the issue I have with that. Then this is made by Illumination, right? The uh, mm-hmm. the people who made the Minions. Yes. The Minions is an entirely like incoherent babbling, <laughs> and it worked for them. Right. So why can't they do that here? Well, they I also, mean, it wouldn't be enjoyable. They also did Despicable Me, which is actually voice acted shit i i don't know i mean we'll have to find out more details on the plot of the movie and what's happening and see if they actually utilize this cast in a good way do we know how involved miyamoto is uh he's like directly involved he's a producer yeah oh, that's that's cool mm-hmm. do mm-hmm. you think though that when box. he's producing this film he's using the funds that he earned on kraken he better be if he knows what's good for him hope so yeah I mean, if you're interested in investing in cryptocurrencies but aren't sure where to get started, well, you can check out Kraken. With Kraken, you can buy and sell over 50 of the most popular cryptos like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and Ethereum 24-7. It's super easy to get started. Just download the app, create an account, and you'll be investing in minutes. I have been doing crypto myself since about 2014? I want to say, and Kraken was legitimately one of the places I started. I've been using it well before we did this podcast. It is it is fucking great. I, I genuinely recommend this. You can also use Kraken to buy pieces of crypto. A lot of people don't seem to understand this. A lot of people get intimidated by crypto and go, oh, Bitcoin's worth like... $40,000. I can't afford that. You don't have to. You can buy half a Bitcoin, a quarter of one, a tenth of one. You can buy one hundredths of a Bitcoin. People do that regularly. Don't be shy to get started. Visit kraken.com slash official to learn more or search for Kraken in the App Store. That's K-R-A-K-E-N dot com slash official or search Kraken in the App Store. It's a fucking cool name for an app, Kraken. I love Kraken. It is a cool I name. use it all the time. All right, moving down the list, we have Charlie Day as Luigi, and I actually really like that. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. I think he could do a good job. I think he fits the kind of smaller, cowardly, more like sidekicky kind of character. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree mm-hmm. with that, and I think he's got enough. Uh, he's got a goofy voice that'll fit. Exactly the yeah, that too. <laughs> uh, yeah. He's yeah. naturally kind of high pitched and kind of like cartoony in how he speaks. I I like that casting. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, really. There's only so with me. There's only three casting decisions here that really. I'm like, what? What, what is up with that? Well, shall we? But, shall we do another good one then to follow yeah. it up? I think yeah. Jack Black as Bowser is great. Yeah. Ugh. 
What? Oh, what do you mean? Uh, you don't like Jablinski games? <laughs> Jack Black's Wait, he's, fucking awesome. He's talked about hating Jablinski games before. Why? <laughs> What's your issue? What? What the fuck is Jablinski games? <laughs> His YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. It's no, Jack he's just Black. not fun. He's not funny. He's not funny. Have you guys ever watched him on a show? Like Kyle yes. Gass, is that his name? His partner's name? He, he like sits next to him so full of his... um. A tired of his shit so like he's about to kill himself i feel bad for that man what are you talking Kyle, about they're in a band that's been touring together for over a decade yeah and they don't look happy have you seen him on i think it was a ethan's podcast h3 yeah he was very unhappy he barely spoke like two words maybe it was um which one jack jack, jack talking the whole time Oh, right, no, right. Kyle. Kyle was sitting in the back just with his arms crossed you know body language just completely fed up with them I don't know. Maybe don't he know, was man. fed. I, maybe I he think, was fed up with Ethan instead. Maybe yeah. It was I was more gonna say. I think anyone <laughs> would be unhappy on that podcast. Ooh, shots fired. Ooh. Yeah. Well, Ooh. Well, why is there so much drama at the moment between Kaya and uh, Jack Black and Andrew and Ethan? What's going on? Why is there so Ooh, much hate drama? I don't care that much. Sounds like yeah. You I've do. got nothing against it's Ethan. Just I'm, not just... A, I'm just not a fan. You guys are weird. I didn't know this was a Jack Black fan club. Jesus, it's fine. I love Jack. Black. Holy this shit! This is a Jack Black household. <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> this, this really is a Jack Black household. <laughs> He's great. <laughs> That's fine. I also, was... if I'm thinking of Bowser, I can very think of very few yeah. other people. I think would do a good job. Who else? Uh, yeah. Who else would you choose? Probably me. I think if they didn't um, go with Jack Black, I probably would have been second. James Earl Jones. Impression, then. I was thinking Jason Earl Jones too, for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fuck yeah. I, I picked Tom Hardy doing the Bane voice. Oh, that'd be just pretty all right too, Ooh, actually. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's get let's get deep into the shit pit. I think this is the one that the most people hate. I, I think this is the most vocal one I've seen. Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. Oh yeah. Chris uh, Pratt boy. as Mario and Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong are equal to me. And like, what the hell? Well, Chris Pratt was the lead in the Lego movie and he did great. Yeah. Chris Pratt is a good voice I'm, actor. I can back oh, Chris Pratt. I don't hate I don't hate it. It's kind of weird, but I don't hate it. But Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong, I'm kind of just like, ah, fuck. Uh, here we go. So, um, so is Donkey Kong going to uh, be like a stereotypical stoner in this movie? <laughs> yeah. That's my worry. That's yeah. my actual worry. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna get Seth wrote that into his origin story. His <laughs> laugh, it's, like Seth Rogen's laugh, I think would do really good with Donkey Kong. So if he's like, "Hey, Cranky Kong, get a load of this," yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it kind of monkeyfied. Yeah, yeah, oh boy, ah, oh boy. This movie sounds like an atrocity in the making. I'm gonna watch it. I'm excited for it, even if it's bad. See- the first time Mario comes across Donkey Kong in the movie, he's got a bong in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes red as fuck. Yeah, and Jesus that was a Christ, mandate like... from Seth Rogen's contract. <laughs> There's oh, like man. nothing on Seth Rogen's entire Wikipedia like history that makes you think, oh, that was good. That was passable. <laughs> like not a single thing. <laughs> he was a fucking big mouth most recently. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Jesus baby. Christ, Seth. Ugh. Yeah, he is the man of substandard comedy. He's he is like pure three out of ten Seth Rogen. I liked uh, Anchorman and the Forty Year Old Virgin. I don't think they were incredible, but he I was still an Anchorman. Them. What he he produces them? G- yeah, yeah. I, I, well, he was. I think he was just on a side role, like kind of like a cameo in. Oh Anchorman. yeah, he was. He was a very minor role in the first one. You're right. Yeah, but uh, Forty Year Old Virgin, I like. Everyone, yeah, everyone. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was just my high school. I'm not sure how universal this was, but everyone fucking loved Superbad when it first came out. There was every people, every yeah. single high school and middle school ever loved Superbad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm with you on Anchorman. Type of everyone, humor, uh, yes. Everyone school in my high school movie. quoted Anchorman for God knows how long. So, mm-hmm. I, Super, I mean, I see it. Yeah, Superbad is one of like the most... Uh, significant comedies that I can think of off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Significant how? Uh, as in, like, everyone knows it, everyone watched it, and for a mm-hmm. while that was, like, the dream for most people. Like, that was, like, the entire atmosphere of high school and middle school yeah it was the it was the escalation of the, like, raunchy comedy, so you had, like, uh, 
Van Wilder and American Pie where it was like, whoa, we're in college and I'm going to fuck every chick and oh, careful, hide the bong from the dean or what the fuck ever. And then Superbad took it to high school, made it a bit more grounded, made it a bit more kind of realistic. And well, that's that how, kind that, of set the tone. That's how I saw it. I, I thought it was just the new generation's American Pie. Because Ameri- the first was, American Pie yeah. was set in high school, right? It was like the same kind of... No, I think, they were I just think it was college, wasn't it? I think they just graduated high school. Mm, so it was right. around... Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what Super Bad was. It took the concept and grounded it and made it more appealing to the newer generation. And it worked so very well. Did you go... Did you, yeah, so you liked it? You liked Super Bad? I liked it a lot when it came out, yeah. I don't know if I'd like it today. I don't know if it would age well, but... Yeah. I also liked it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I do I do wonder if it would still uh, stand up in today's time, since that, that kind of, I feel like that kind of comedy and those kinds of jokes are just, like, pretty generic now. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think anyone would really bat their eyes. <laughs> Wait, why you think society is too sophisticated now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not sophisticated. No. They didn't even no, no, mention no, no, no. Big Chungus and Superbad. <laughs> <laughs> there's not enough memes. Um, no, what I meant mm. was, like, it, there's just so many of those movies that already exist now. Like, it's just... Well, yeah, uh, it's a tired... It comedy wouldn't. comes in waves. You start a new idea, it catches on, and then it dies. I mean, look at uh, spoof movies. Airplane mm-hmm. came in and revolutionized spoofs, and then eventually it died out with like epic movie and disaster movie and like yeah, all the God, really shitty so ones. Bad. Yeah, so comedy bad. comedy starts trends and then milks them till they're dry and moves on. Super bad brought in the trend of like realistic shit talking dialogue and tons of swearing and just awkward kids or teenagers or young adults, and now we're milking it till it's dry. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so speaking who, of comedians and comedy, we have Keegan Michael Key as Toad. Yeah. I don't know what you to say about have that. Yeah. Strong opinions here. <laughs> yeah. I think all of us just made a, gave a collective who. Oh, I know who that well, is. He's huge. everyone knows who that is. Yeah, I, don't. I actually don't. I, I mean, I know the name, but Key I and like, Peel is stuff. one of the best modern comedies in a long time. Yeah, but I think it's very American. Like, I don't think. Me That's or fair. I would really know about it. That's totally but fair. I, I have I have heard the name for sure. Um, yeah, I think so that that's pretty is he good. Or bad? Like, that could go either way. Um, he, he was in Toy Story Four along with uh, Keel as side characters, and that was pretty good, right? Yeah, I think yeah. he's talented. I think that'll be fine. I don't know like, yeah. what Toad's gonna say though. Toad's not exactly like a vocal character. He's one of the most oh God, vocal I in Mario. Oh, God, I fucking hate Toad. He's Toad? Toad? Yeah, Wait, he's what? the one that people remember his voice. The, I'm the best! Everyone loves God, that. Stop, uh, we'll don't do it. it. He's not exactly like a, a heavy story character. Like, you yeah, don't, but he can be. Well, neither is Mario. Yeah, but no, yeah. Mario, like, his adventures have a story to them. Toad is just usually in the background like, so, Mario. Ah. Yeah, but he'll he'll be. He literally doesn't talk. Like, what the fuck is what's his face Keegan gonna say? Like, well, well, again, we don't we don't know the plot of the Miyamoto movie. That's gonna up, determine yeah. everything. You know, Miyamoto's got a, he he's got like a six hundred page script over there. He's been and working also, on for the last two decades. We're also not considering like the spinoff games, like in the RPGs. Toad talks all the time. Oh, that you know? may be the case, yeah, I don't really yeah. keep up with the spin very often. We need that more details awful. of this movie to really know if it's going to be have, a good or a bad. Have you guys even played the best Mario game, Captain Toad's puzzle tracker thing? I Treasure Tracker. Yeah, that yeah. one, Captain Toad. I, oh, yeah. I did tracker. play that. Oh, that's a great game. That's unironically a great game. I love yeah. it. I just don't like puzzle I games like a- that. I love puzzle games. It was a good game, but again, Toad is insufferable. You're just sitting there listening to that little shit guy. Oh, yeah, I played it on, I over played it on and mute. Over. I played it on mute. Oh. But. He's great, so, though. He, get, he gets hit in Mario Kart and goes, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It's awesome. Oh. <laughs> he does do that. He does do yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, they're Best. absolutely going to incorporate Mario Kart somehow into the movie. Uh, I, I, I hope so. I wonder. I hope yeah, they I wonder how. Off Toad. Oh, jeez, okay. Wow, that's Let's rough. Some pesticide on him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next we have Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong, and as a big Fred Armisen fan, I am perfectly fine with this. 
I'm just yeah, happy to see I, Cranky Kong in here. That means the DK rap's probably coming. Oh, fuck. That's huge. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Mm, I love Fred. I think he's really funny. Okay. Uh, Kevin Michael Richardson is Kamek. And he is... What is he in? Yeah, I don't, never heard that name. He was Apparently the, he was Goro was in the name? Mortal Kombat movie. <laughs> Wait, Whoa. what's his name? That's fucking awesome. Uh, Kevin Michael Richardson. I don't remember. Oh, he's, cur he's currently Dr. Hibbert in The Simpsons. What the fuck? Oh, it looks okay. like you come out of a lamp if you rub it. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, uh, he's on Family Guy. Yeah. Okay. As a bunch of voices. Oh. Okay. So, wait, who's he playing? On Family Guy, he plays Jerome. No. No, or I don't I, I couldn't care less about family guy. Oh, I thought Andrew. this was your <laughs> 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 no, Mario. No, Mario, Mario. Oh, the thing Kamek. we're talking about. Kamek, good lord. <laughs> okay. okay, the the wizard <laughs> thing. The little wizard. Yeah, guy. Bowser's Bowser's wizard sidekick. Yeah. Okay, it seems with this role, they finally decided to go with an actual professional voice actor instead of <laughs> uh, rich <laughs> famous celebrities. So this yeah. guy actually has experience voice acting. Right. Okay, neat. And then, Whoa. um... Whoa, what, are you, what are you talking about? Seth Rogen was in Sausage Party. He's got the acting chops that we need. <laughs> that is true. That's fair. He true. played an animated sausage. It was and this, this one confuses me. <laughs> Sebastian Maniscalco as Spike. I don't know who Spike is in I don't Mario. Know. Isn't, that a, isn't that a Sonic character? Mm. What? No, you're thinking of Knuckles, I think. Mm. That's it, Spike. It may be. Spike is apparently is a generic enemy Spike looking it back. up. Oh. Ew. Spike Mario. Oh. oh. Big break up rolled there. Believe it or Wait, not, it's so the guy who throws spikes. Wow, that's pretty cool. That is pretty nuts. Do, yeah. Do we have Fair do enough. we have like chain chomp? So oh where's Monty Mole? He's gotta be in there. All right, I'll I'll make a prediction now that you said that, Jackson. If there are generic enemies in this game, like Spike, there will be a scene where they get chased by a chain chomp and it like runs towards the camera and they have to run away from it, like video game style during the movie. I'd make a bet. Well, yeah, I, mm, I, I think that's pretty. That's a safe bet. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think they'll go into a dark. Um, harrowing story about how the chain chomp just wants to leave its peg in the ground but it can't <laughs> and it's a very heartfelt moment where mario has to decide whether or not to befriend the chain chomp and let him <laughs> let yeah. him free the they, they dive into class warfare like how the welfare of the mushroom kingdom mm -hmm. isn't paying him enough to live his life <laughs> yeah Oh, yeah. princess, princess peach is oppressing the the mushroom kingdom do we know yeah. the rating yeah. on the movie it, it, it could very well be this route like i don't think they right. confirmed and like a e for everyone rating mario's gonna walk in on luigi fucking peach and that's gonna be the catalyst for the whole Ooh. movie oh, he man, vows to nuts. take revenge yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. what it's if like, peach is just cheating it's on like, him and we finally it's find like, out yeah it's the marriage story like they go through this heartbreaking divorce over the span of 90 minutes it's a, yeah, it's a court drama movie. It's Mario <laughs> fighting for custody of his kids. <laughs> Bowser is an antagonist. <laughs> ba Bowser's actually just a, like a witness or something like oh, that. Oh, man. Understand. Yeah, you forgot uh, the that. voice cast also includes Liam Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I'd watch that, actually. Fuck yeah. And then finally is Charles Martinet, the original voice of Mario, Luigi, Wario, God knows how many Nintendo characters, in an uncredited cameo. That we, <gasps> He's going to well, play not, Shigeru Miyamoto. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean uncredited. I mean, they have not announced what character he is playing yet. What could he play mm. then? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Do I you have think a feeling it? there will be a, a scene where Mario meets either his clone or a That's, past yeah. version and it'll be yeah. voiced by Miyamoto. Like Mario, no. Mario, he'll be like looking at it like maybe a past video of himself. And in that video, yeah. it'll be like the old school Mario and Charles Martinet will be doing the like, what? Let's go. Woohoo. Instead of the regular Chris Pratt voice <laughs> acting. And Chris Pratt is going to be like, that is so offensive. That's not how I talk. <laughs> I'm such a stereotype. Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, I looked up. Well, I looked up. Luck, I looked I up. Uh, 
uh, what's his name, Charles Martinet's like film history, and his two most recent films are Luigi Meets a Combine Elite and Luigi Meets a Combine Soldier. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Wait, what? Yeah, look it up. Look at um, Charles Martinet and his two most recent movies. A uh, Luigi meets a Combine soldier. Like I combine have from Rekindle and the Super Mario Brothers movie. Why am I getting something completely different? Are you on YouTube looking up his movie list? No, I'm only on. I'm on. Because those are not like, canon, Jackson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, this is an eight point three on IMDb. It it's not an official good. Nintendo Cup production. It doesn't have the seal of quality. Can you guys not see this? What is this? <laughs> What? It's it's on my Google, yeah. Here, Look, put it, it in I the... Just posted the poster. Oh, somebody posted it. What the fuck? That, Jackson, that's like the source movie maker or something. Yeah, but it's only he's like actual yeah, IMDb. No, Jackson, anyone well, can, can do that. Yeah, yeah. anyone can edit uh, IMDb. If you look at his credits, he has the stupid Mario Brothers show, which is a fucking Gary's Mod animated series. That's only two episodes long. But this has an 8.3 on IMDb. It's real. <laughs> so does our podcast. Does it have an 8.3? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give us a good review, everybody. IMDb. Yeah. Dot com slash official? I don't even know. Yeah, get us up no, there we jumped, Jackson. Name. We have a 9.1 on IMDb. Holy shit. We're yeah. even better. Can someone add oh. Charles Martinet to our, <laughs> our cast? <laughs> oh, yeah. Credit him for this episode. That'd be real nice. Yeah, do it. Then then Miyamoto will have to recognize us. Yeah, then I'll finally get a role in the movie. So how yeah, high up is Miyamoto in Nintendo? Like how much how much sway does he have? Mm. Miyamoto? Yeah. Being that he's a producer, probably ultimate. Yeah, you you think he's got full control over it? Probably. Over Nintendo. Or at least a good no. amount. No, yeah, I still think he has to serve some sort of a higher panel of super old boomers who don't know what the internet is. That's what I feel. That as just well. explains Nintendo's behavior. Just a bunch yeah. of li like literally ninety-year-old lawyers. Yeah. So think about it. Them. If he works for Nintendo, which is notorious for operating like it's nineteen eighty, then mm -hmm. him working with movie execs doing the same thing is not going to be a problem. I don't know. Yeah, I have true. no hope for this. Um, oh, yeah. No, I think it's going to be a stinker. I don't know. Yeah. The Sonic movie wasn't bad. It'd be all right. The Pikachu movie was good. This could be fine. I think they were both average at best. Yeah. Not a problem. Hmm. Well, I just can always don't... get someone a Fiverr to fix it. I was going to say, I don't want to dump on it too hard, just like I would <laughs> never dump on Fiverr because I use Fiverr all the time. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the pretense. I was on Fiverr last night scrolling through voice actress auditions because I'm working on a project that needs a voice actress. And you just go to Fiverr, you type in what you need, you scroll through the qualified candidates, or let's say someone puts their listing on Fiverr and you're not a fan of them, well you can just move on. Pick someone else because they will give you all the tools you need to filter and search the freelance talent that you need for whatever you need. You would be shocked by the things that you can find on Fiverr. And don't think that you've got to really commit to a big old hiring thing. You can find people as low as just dudes doing it for like, well, $5 for whatever service you need. You can also go to the high end. Let's say you want to find some audio mixing. You can find studios on there, entire teams of people that have Fiverr accounts. that You just sign on for negotiating whatever they're going to do and go from there. They have a giant repository of help and talent and skill and any type of people that you would need for any type of project. I use Fiverr constantly. I use it for so many things. I can't even begin to describe where graphic design, music production, helping transcribe certain things that I need for legibility, like from old stuff I'm working on. Like all this stuff, all this stuff found on Fiverr and more. You're also going to find copywriting, web designing, web programming, film editing, scoring music, etc. 
24-7 customer service as well. So if someone's maybe being a bit unscrupulous on Fiverr, they're like <gasps> trying to trying to cheese you out of your hard-earned money, uh, they're not going to let that happen. Reach out at any time. Pricing is also project-based, not hourly. So don't feel like you have to make a giant commitment. It's just purely see if you're happy with what you pay for and work with whoever you find on there. You can find a freelancer with the specific skills you need for your project by going to Fiverr.com with two R's and receiving 10% off of your first order by using code OP. All the digital services mm -hmm. you need in one place at F-I-V-E-R-R.com code OP. That's Fiverr.com code OP. I can't recommend it highly enough. I have found many a talent on there that i have used i've got evidence i've got receipts look at my work it's there <laughs> i think i think you. it's also a good service uh if you're looking for money as well if you want to advertise your yes. services go ahead also and true use you can to do that send your shit up on fiverr start up a profile say what you do you can also i've seen this with a lot of people i've worked with you can advertise multiple services at once so let's say you are a musician, you can do a whole Fiverr listing for music transcribing and uh, note writing, or you can do a service for composing music, or you can do a service for maybe playing in a band for someone or et cetera. You don't have to just start with one thing. You can put up multiple listings and take on orders as you get them. So don't be I shy. If I, I wonder if I could set up like a Fiverr account where people pay me to send them like motivating messages or like that would be oh uh, yeah oh yeah you're just talking about being a personal like life coach aka yeah. scammer yeah <laughs> well yeah why well, I, I didn't so i didn't want to do it during yeah. the ad but now that the ad's over that would just be cameo oh yeah true yeah well on cameo they like dictate what you say isn't it like the, the people just read what yeah. um the fans yeah. Jackson, what say. If, jackson what if you secretly hired somebody to jack up your gamer score Ooh, Ooh, that oh, sounds cheating. that sounds like something Jackson would do. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> why? Why do you be smirching me like that? That sounds That's like cheating. It sounds like up. Jackson. <laughs> when have well, I ever done anything like heart. that? That's you, actually. You fucking. <laughs> You, you, oh my god, your destiny uh, pay for wins and shit. Excuse you, you, my in my grind. You mean with that game, Jackson? With my I, yeah, my yes, tears. Yes, I, I meant the legal, yeah, nothing suspicious here, Bungie. Don't ban the account. He did it all himself. <laughs> Jackson made me do it. If, if the did investigation <laughs> does turn up anything, it was Jackson's idea to do that. <laughs> I don't believe it was. Yeah. I, I feel like we're going to have to like, verify the IP logs of your PlayStations <laughs> yeah. or, or and Xboxes it'll all or whatever. Be, it, it'll all check out with a, a good green green light. Green light for Charlie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll just say in the logs, Jackson was here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jackson, you had like an anecdote about Chris Pratt or something, didn't you? It's from, uh, from Twitter. Yeah, talking about the project already being cancelled, the Mario project already being cancelled. So Chris Pratt gave an interview shortly after that announcement on the Nintendo Direct. And he, and he talked briefly about a story about how he would steal coins out of a nearby wishing well when he was young in order to afford <laughs> playing the game. Because I don't know if many people know this, but Chris Pratt uh, did not grow up rich. He was, a, he was a homeless man for a while, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Um, yeah, so uh, he used to steal coins out of a wishing well and use it to play Mario games. So he was talking about how uh, those wishes on those coins came true for him, granting him the role <laughs> of the character he's always loved and he couldn't be more excited. That's like a direct quote of what he said. And Twitter was up in arms about that. You do not joke around with shit like that. Twitter, there's so many Twitter posts currently. Uh, I'll just read this one verbatim. I'm shocked more people aren't talking about Chris Pratt's Instagram story where he suggested he got the role of Mario because he stole someone else's wish via coin from a wishy well <laughs> to play a Mario arcade as a kid. It's just really weird and off-putting. I hope he's arrested <laughs> and put on trial for this. <laughs> for something that he did when he was like six years old. Yeah, I hope the police actually is... take him to court and like the people versus Chris Pratt over that dollar seventy-five he stole in quarters. No, it, it's less about the, it's less about the money, fucking, though. Is he, like, squeaky clean if this is the best they have on him? Is like, oh, he used to steal coins out of a fucking wishing well. 
Who didn't nope. do small crimes as a kid? I used to yeah. take coins out of fountains sometimes. Just he was a crime? fucking kid. It's less about the money. He's stealing wishes. Didn't you really yeah, stick a wish? Oh, God, dude. Oh, Fair enough. God. He's like a wish, wish vampire. Yeah, oh, fucking no. Thing. Those wishes were going straight to the moon and we're going to power it during its umbra cycle. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that monster. That piece that of Mario shit. That Mario role was going to go to some small child in, in <laughs> some, some random Arkansas. kid in fucking Wyoming could have been Mario if that coin was still in that fountain. Oh, yeah. What if it was Keanu Reeves' coins? Oh, he, oh. he really wanted that Mario row. <laughs> yeah, he's doing so poorly without being Mario. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just I, I just love that even like a small little anecdote in an interview. Like it, this is clearly like just something goofy that he he's talking about from when he was a kid. It's like harmless. And still it's enough to send like Twitter people into like rampages. It's God. it's funny. Um it's like it's, sorry, go on. I, I should no, I, no I I just just reacting. I, I can't believe this shit. This shit makes me irrationally angry. Yeah. Yeah, it's just oh, it's, it's just fucking it's retarded. funny. I did not know that Italiophobia was a word, but I guess I learned that just now. Uh he's also being accused of that. What is Fear that? Fear of well, Italians? For, for uh, oh. Italiophobia. No. <laughs> Wait, like, is it is it a, a homophobia, is it fear or I guess, a, against Italians? Yeah, are they saying it's a fear or are they saying that he hates Italian people? Uh Okay, you know what? I'm not reading this. Fuck this. I'm done. No, this is too much. <laughs> yeah, stupid. Italophobia this is a negative attitude regarding Italian people. So it's it's basically like Islamophobia or whatever, but what's, for Italians. What's wrong with that? They fought against us in World War Two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did. You're right. They did. Right. You can't deny history, Charlie. Yeah, Try it. Wait, what do you mean, me? I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie hates Italians. That's why he loves Mario. He's an Italian stereotype. He laughs at him. He's a minstrel show for Charlie's modern taste. Charlie, do you like Mario? <laughs> yeah, I like Mario. Racist. <laughs> oh, okay, that's what I was you guys remember when we were at Charlie's for dinner and he put like spaghetti and used it as a mustache and made these super offensive anecdotes about Italian people? God, I remember. He jumped on the fucking table with his dumb little shoes and said, look at me, I lost World War II. It was <laughs> fucked up. That does sound pretty fucked up. Man, they didn't even commit to did their that. side in World War II. As soon as they started losing, they left. You can't trust the... <laughs> they were also the little kid brother of the rest of the Axis powers, though. Like, Germany and Japan were all like, we're going to go fuck stuff up, and Italy was like, yeah, we'll be there too, ha huh? Yeah, they said that what they did, they were like, oh, all right, we'll, we'll go invade Africa. So they went down south and got beat down there, and then we're yeah. like, oh, no, we quit. They we were quit. a pretty uh, bumbling mess during World War II. Uh, to be yeah. fair, like, everyone was in World War II. Not USA. We we sat on our hands just playing our stick ball and not giving a shit. And then we got slapped once and we were like, all right, this war ends now. And then we, of course, single handedly ended the war ourselves. It's the history. Oh I my read. God, there's already so many fucking articles just talking about the dumbest fucking shit. They're literally mad at him because he goes to church. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna, I'm not oh, fucking cool. kidding you. Jesus I was going to say like. Twitter genuinely does hate Chris Pratt. I've seen it for the like, last two years, maybe. like No, this is Kotaku. Well, Twitter no, well, too, but like... Yeah, it's, it's all mostly the same crowd. Like, same there's dishes. just... Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of fervor and hate towards Chris Pratt because he shares his religious beliefs. And from what I've read, they've been pretty like tame. Like He just, he just goes to church and I, he, eats red, red, he eats red meat. You know what it is, right? Stuff. You know what all this is, right? It's a bunch of man Jealousy. children and like actually fucking immature human beings that are so mad that Chris Pratt's playing Mario that they want to attack him personally. It was happening before yeah. he was cast as Mario. Do you think that they were doing it in advance to him being cast as Mario? <laughs> they because they fueled that fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's fucking pathetic. It's, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's, uh, it's, he's fine. He's like, it's fine. He's All of these people, you guys got to remember, this is a job. You know, it's it's a job. If you were a big actor 
such as Chris Pratt or Jack Black or whoever, and your studio came up and said, do you want to play Mario? They'd be like, absolutely. fucking lootly I know that character. I play the game. I like him. I definitely want to be Mario in a fucking movie. That sounds great. Who wouldn't want I to? I feel like the internet yeah, should Twitter like Chris Pratt more. I feel like in, uh, the internet should like Chris Pratt more because he was homeless for like 10 years and, and he found like a big break. He wasn't Why just like born like into the that? industry. I don't know. It's like the underdog story. As if any of these people actually give a shit about like homeless people or the poor getting a break. I just I guess, hate all around. Fucking douchebags. Whatever. Yeah, celebrate Fuck it. But, well, you can make fun of it, but also celebrate it because it is pretty funny. Chris Pratt playing Mario. I'm fine with it. I'm holding judgment on this whole thing until it actually comes out. Yeah. Oh yeah, I feel bad for him that you know this is gonna be a blot on his career probably. But yeah, what? You're, he's I the one who stole the movie. wishes. What if it's a good I movie? I highly doubt that. And also, Plus, blot, blot on millions. his career. Let's lay down the facts right now. No matter what quality the movie is, it's going to sell fuckloads. Yeah, yeah. This is going yeah. to be yeah. one of his highest grossing roles. It's one of the largest yeah, fucking. But, like, Names in in like media Mario as well as yeah. made by the people who made the biggest name in in media uh, the Minions. So it's a slam I mean Chris Pratt's also a huge A list actor. Fucking Marvel Cinematic Universe, Jurassic Park. It's not like he's like a an underdog choice, you know. And again, it appeals to the stoners who always turn up in force because <laughs> we got yeah. Seth Rogen there. So I mean, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say though. Is in five years, all we're gonna think about this is like, oh, he was in that movie with Seth Rogen. Oh, yeah, ew. <laughs> See, I, I guess maybe so, Seth Rogen is a I don't, I don't think that character. about the so I don't think that about the Sonic movie. We all thought the Sonic movie was gonna be horrendous, and it was fine. So. Well, do you guys think they're gonna leak? Uh, like production versions of Mario and then people are going to get mad at it that it's not <laughs> Ooh, yeah. too Mario enough and they're going to redesign it. He looks too human. Uh, Make him shorter. Really, they, they get really pissed and want to design him like the old Mario cartoon where he's a really stereotypical Brooklyn plumber. Really fat <laughs> fuck guy. Hey Luigi, come on, that fucking accent. <laughs> Did Nintendo have anything to do with that originally? Like they had they, to approve they it. They did, I'm but sure, it was but... before Mario was like standardized as a character, so they didn't really right. know what they wanted to do with him. So Mario at that point was more of an idea. Yeah, as, as... it was more of a concept. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then when uh, it was actually Mario sixty four that solidified who he is today, because Charles Martinet came in and changed the game. You guys know that story? It's pretty cute. No. Mm -mm. So Charles Martinet got the role of Super Mario because Nintendo was like, all right, we're doing 3D Mario, the Mario 64. We need like him to speak like that's a big draw of a 3D game. He's never talked before, only in like the, the non-canon media, like the cartoons and the television show and shit. We need him to actually talk in the game. So they had auditions all day. And 99.9% .9 of the people who showed up based their voice off of the existing Mario media, like the cartoon and shit. So they were like, hey, I'm Mario. Luigi, come on, get the fire flower and all that shit. And Charles Martinet, I think his reasoning was he wasn't familiar with all of that or he didn't really... Uh, know anything about Mario beyond he was Italian. So he went in and he rambled <laughs> incoherently for like 20 minutes going, I get this spaghetti, ravioli, Luigi, let's go. <laughs> Literally just did that for like 20 minutes and left. And he was the only candidate that Nintendo liked, so they immediately the hired him. That's crazy. Oh, just when I do it, I have security called on me and I get called a racist. That, that literally <laughs> determined uh, how Mario speaks today and changed the entire character. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very cute story. It's a very cute story. I wonder I wonder which wishing well he ransacked to get that. <laughs> <laughs> Mine. That's my wish. <laughs> just doing uh, a bunch of racist impressions and getting a job. Sign me up. Wait, so he, he's American as well, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think he's American. So he, so this was a joint effort between America and Japan to really rub it into the. He is the American. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> he is American. That's for so, World War Two. Do you think that uh, though they should have maybe saved some money hiring him with Honey? I think they should have. Yeah. Yeah. For and sure, I'm going sure. to read this story of Honey that I want to read. I'm compelled. 
Here we go. Once upon a time, there was a guy named Ryan who just wanted to save a little extra cash on his pizza order. He was determined to find a promo code. Like, he became a Google detective, searching for a code in every nook and cranny of the internet. Ryan didn't want to overpay for his pizza, but his kids were hungry, his wife was tired, <laughs> and it had been a long week. Was there a working promo code out there somewhere? Probably. Uh huh. Did he give up and pay full price? Yep. He Idiota. knew there had to be a better way. So he teamed up with a friend to make one. Honey. Oh. Honey is the free, easy way to listen to a story of one man's wishing well coin goal of how to make a browser extension that scans the internet for promo codes. So you don't have to pay full price on shit that you don't need to pay for. A lot of sites work where you already shop. You just hit apply coupons at checkout and fly away on the bundles of savings. I am currently building a dedicated streaming PC. And let me tell you guys something mm. right now. The computer parts market is fucked. It is mm -hmm. top to bottom fucked. Everything is overpriced and marked up and bought by bots and resold by scalpers. It is terrible. So thankfully, lately using Honey, I have been able to skim some dollars here and there from changing things using their bot and going, oh, hey, look, on this website, it's cheaper thanks to Honey. Or, oh, hey, look, I can use this here and save some dollars because I feel so bad for anyone trying to buy and build a computer right now. It's, it's, it's an the actual worst nightmare. It. it is the worst time to do it. It is fucking awful. I mean, fuck, same really with consoles. And, oh, God, gaming will never recover. Thank God this movie's coming out to kickstart the industry. <laughs> you can add Honey to your computer in seconds at joinhoney.com slash official. That's joinhoney.com slash official. It is completely free, and it saves you money. So why, why not do it? Give me one reason why you wouldn't do that. Are you dumb? I didn't think so. Uh, Jackson, is this confirmed at all, or is it just a shitty fake news rumor, the Quantic Dream thing? Do you know um, it? Yeah, it seems know? like a. It seems like a. It was confirmed. Like I think it was confirmed. Okay, I don't know for well, sure. But you can talk about fuck it. it. Let's announce it. Quantic Dream is working on a Star Wars game. It's let's claimed. Go let's go, Jackson. Let's be. We like Star Wars. We like Star Wars. We like it. Yeah, congratulations, Jackson. David Cage plus Star Wars might be the best pairing I've ever heard of. I, I'm a, yeah, I'm honestly really excited for it. Fox, <laughs> this is yes. going idiot. to be a stupid. I cannot what? wait to hit like 17 buttons to swing the lightsaber. Fuck yeah. Charlie, and you, then do it again. you loved, you I loved uh, <laughs> Detroit as well. I know. I, I, I love his stupid fucking games. I can't yeah. wait for the yeah. opening well, Jackson, scene to be, them. I have to drink my fucking space orange juice on the Death Star. Do you, remember when he, do you remember when he said that he does objectify women? Do you remember like he gave that interview? And oh, he's like, you're, you're taking him, you're misquoting him, uh, Charlie. I yeah. think he said he doesn't make games for and also oh, all of yeah. the women in his games are whores. That's what he was said. That, like, was that a verbatim quote? Yes. I think so. I think that's actually Holy like shit. verbatim <laughs> what he said. Don't you remember? Maybe we talked about this on, it was a while back. He was in well, court right. because um, they were alleging sexual uh, harassment at his company, I think. Uh, he I think, it, all, I think it was all a big, yeah. Yeah, it was um, all a big misunderstanding. It was an audible um, typo. I'm going I'm to go it. ahead and read this <laughs> as a direct quote. He said he was yes, defending please. himself against the uh, sexual harassment uh, allegations, and he said... Uh, let's see. A anyway, in all my games, all women are whores. In an open, sp <laughs> in the open space, there's lack of tits. And in Quantic Dream, <laughs> we don't make games for that terrible F slur. That bad so, word I won't say on the internet. Is that what the Quantic Dream is for for these women to have big tits? <laughs> Uh, this was like so what long ago fuck? too this was like last year that we left it oh no actually it was just a few months ago but it's yeah, still it was, fucking it funny really yeah. <laughs> we didn't, Time we didn't really talk flies, about uh, that i do not remember I that quote so. at all so i don't think we talked yeah, about we that did. quote we did 
We did. All right, never mind. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, anyway, so he's making a Star Wars game, and I guess Ray and Leia are gonna be whores. Fuck yes, with giant tits, and they're gonna say racial and gay slurs. That's right. Fuck if you're yeah. gay, don't play this game. Oh, I don't understand. Was there any like anti-gay stuff in Detroit Beyond no. Human? I don't. You you literally can go around and like watch male lap dancers and isn't yeah you one can of the you can lesbian? Um, you can do whatever the hell you want. It's actually a pretty tolerant game because yeah you can go to a uh, like robot sex club and like both the male and female robots. It's just like casual like hey you want to have sex? Like yeah sure. It's fine. Yeah, oh, that's that's not wrong I, I didn't. I, I I've always known that like David Cage is a bit weird about objectifying women, like he's done it in previous games and stuff. But I I never got the anti uh, gay stuff, like anti gay vibes from it at all. <laughs> Hell, one so, of the I major one of the major plot threads in Detroit Become Human is a blossoming like really close tender relationship between two male coworkers. So why the fuck did he say that? <laughs> I'm so I don't confused. know. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you, actually. Maybe he meant he doesn't insane. make games for pussies? I don't know. God, I want to replay Detroit. The game's so fucking good. Yeah, uh, by the way, there's more to the quote. Not from him, but it says, uh, Cage was stammering in tears and exclaiming, You interfere in my business! <laughs> he sounds <laughs> like, uh, the courtroom. He sounds like Tommy Fleeing Rousseau. from defense lawyers. You interfere in my business. <laughs> All women in my movies are whores. Like, it's just Tommy Rousseau. <laughs> uh, I fed up with this oh, Star man. Wars game. I go make a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, 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 wonder, so, I, I wonder how... Love, um, sorry, Jackson, go ahead. I was just going to say, I wonder how much of the game's uh, greatness, like, beyond uh, the robot game. I fucking can't remember its name right now. Detroit. But, yeah, Detroit be be Become Human. Uh, I wonder how much of that is due to, like, him. I wonder how, like, how much does he put into the game? Oh, a lot. The, I would they assume all have a, a distinct bunch, yeah. stink. So we, we, we can't do without him, sadly, if we want to repeat why? Well, mm -mm. <laughs> sorry, gays and ladies, but <laughs> I really want more David Cage games. <laughs> I'm such I a really big, want a Star big Wars fan. One. I'm It'll such be a the big, first big Star Wars fucking, game uh, I'd have ever played if he makes one. Yeah, such a big fucking fan of just like art. I don't know what to call them art weirdos like Tommy Wiseau and David Cage and just all these people who just you you you, you know their touch. You know when it's something they made. I, I love that. Yeah. It's so and good. And the deliciousness I, is that he doesn't like do the cop out thing where after the fact he pretends like he meant for it to be shitty. No, no, like he dicks his heels in and he he's like actually really, really proud of his work. And he genuinely thinks it's unironically amazing, which makes it better. I like I like that, though. I like when people have pride in their work and they actually believe in the thing they're making. I just don't like Yeah, I like him. that, too. <laughs> I guess. I don't <laughs> like him. It sounds like... If that quote was like... I'm not sure what kind of context could have possibly made that quote <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know the context around it. But that quote alone is just pretty uh, off-footing, obviously. Mm -hmm. Ah, fun. All right. Do we got anything else? I can ask a couple patron questions since we haven't in a while. Yeah, definitely quick ones. Where did yeah, you find right. those, Jackson? Patreon.com slash the official podcast. This one comes from Noah oh. Bailey. What was your worst Uber slash Lyft slash taxi experience and why? When I was mm -hmm. in college, I once had to take the train home because I didn't have a car. And uh, I had to call a taxi because it was pretty much before Uber was even a thing. And the guy showed up <clears throat> like 45 minutes late. And keep in mind, I'm trying to get to the train station to catch a train. And I called mm -hmm. the company and I was like, hey, where's my cab? What the fuck? And they were like, all right, we'll call him and see where he is. And he finally showed up. And his like way of trying to placate me was, don't worry, don't worry. I take people to the train station all the time. You won't be late. I know the timetable by heart. You'll be fine. And I like when I got there, I had to fucking sprint to make it onto that fucking train. 
But you made so, it. I did. But the guy was just a real asshole about it. He like didn't apologize. He didn't care. He was just like, no, no, fair, it's fine. It's fine. You'll make it. He like, so. He got you there, though, he, and he accounted for your sprinting speed as well. To make <laughs> yeah, sure I guess that that's the reason he's never late. He <laughs> yeah. knew I was a he, fast runner. Yeah. God, no, that's, um, that's definitely the worst one I've had. That guy was a huge asshole. My I worst, don't have a story. My worst one is fairly recent. I went up north for a little um, trip to see some friends up, uh, yeah, up north, and... I hopped in an Uber at the airport. The airports uh, have like a pretty strict mask mandate, obviously. So you have to wear masks. And as the, as the guy's pulling up, he's gesturing to his face wildly. Like he was honestly like his hand movements, he was like freaking out. He was like swinging his arms around. And I was like, is this, is this my Uber driver? And so he pulls in and I hop in and he go and he starts like ranting about why, why am I wearing a mask and stuff? And like trying to force my mask, not are force you? my mask down, but... Yeah, he was. He was like, "You don't have to wear a mask here. This is Australia. We don't. We don't have coronavirus. Stop wearing a mask." <laughs> and, and he was like directly trying to make me remove my mask. He wasn't touching me or anything, but he was very aggressive about it. And I was like, "But it's. It's. I don't want to get fined. Like, the the, the airports have a mask mandate. I can't take it off." And he was just very aggressive about the whole thing, and it made me very uncomfortable. And then the entire trip, Aww. he was just constantly talking about how there's no coronavirus here. And, and how you don't need to wear a mask and you shouldn't wear a mask. And it was just such an uncomfortable trip. <laughs> so that's, that's my most this? recent. It was like, I don't know, three, four, three, four months ago. Pretty oh recent. Boy. Oh boy. Oh yeah. boy. I, I hope you run into him again. You get to gloat so hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I wonder how he's doing now. If he's still wildly swinging his arms around the airport. With that, I'll miss you every day. probably killed by now. Yeah, it was, it was pretty aggressive um I, I like i usually like ubers that just don't even talk to you like yeah. they just ignore that you're there agree mm -hmm. that's yeah that's always that's always the best if you could just sit there and pretend like you're in your own little bubble i hate when they try to force conversation and stuff i agree it's always yeah. it's always so annoying mm -hmm. having to like interact that way but on usually i can make it work if, it. if they're not aggressively swinging their arms around on the flip of it say? have you ever had an uber where they were just like really on the fucking ball and nice like they would offer you gum or fucking oh, cables yeah. to charge your phone i love those yeah. guys they're the real heroes yeah like i've I've had far more um nice experiences than i have had bad experiences because most uber drivers obviously they want they, they're just looking to make money so yeah they're trying to do the best that they can and it's appreciated what about you charlie what's your worst experience I've never had like a bad Uber or Lyft experience. They're all just pretty forgettable. Uh, but I have had bad taxi experiences. In fact, I don't think I've ever had a fucking positive taxi experience. I am so glad taxis are going extinct. <laughs> Everyone who drove a taxi was an insufferable asshole when I got in there pretty much. Like I, mm -hmm. I didn't use the taxi super often, but back in college before Uber, they used to have a row of taxis that would take people where they want to go. And like clockwork, Link. they would refuse to take you to most places. So they'd get you, but they wouldn't tell you. So they'd get you like halfway there and then let you out to walk like the next like half mile there for some reason because they wanted like Why? extra. I don't, I don't know. I guess they wanted to go back to the university and like farm it that way without actually completing the trip. <laughs> oh, I get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But if it, they're wait, charging they still... by uh, like if they charge a fee to start and then it's just, oh, this many more for the, each mile, it would make more sense because they start up a fee and get more money than if they just finished yours. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that's probably what it was. The longer they travel, the longer the unpaid trip back is like they're, they're spending more time going back mm, to the right. university, which is unpaid. So they don't make money then. I guess God. that makes sense. That is a, that is a dick thing. Charlie, do you remember when you and I went to a house party in a taxi and it was totally full and the guy made you kneel on the floor? Oh, oh yeah. That was like our yeah. first house party together, yeah. It was. <laughs> he made that you kneel on the floor? That was a fun yeah. story. So, so we were going to this house party and there were a bunch of kids at his college that were trying to get in a taxi. So it was one of those like van taxis. 
So it was like, he was oh. like, okay, you sit there, you guys go there, you guys go there. And there was just one spot that just didn't have a seat because it's where everyone got in. So Charlie had to sit there and basically did like a football take a knee for the entire drive. Yeah, it was so <laughs> stupid. It was so it was dumb. Funny. Yeah. That, gr- that floor would have been so disgusting too. I know. Yep. I, I, it Ew. was so funny. I mean, the, the whole point was he wanted to cram as many people in as he could so he could jack up the fare. Could he not? Was there a seat in the front that he couldn't give to you? Like the passenger no, seat? No, that's like, where I was right sitting because I was huge. Uh, so it was it was Charlie, me, and I think like four or five girls and uh i had to sit in the front because i physically could not fit in the back andrew also did you had say long was... hair during this time yeah i did oh, really yeah okay did you say that it was you anything. charlie and like five six girls is that what you said oh don't worry we didn't know them just to clear things up <laughs> <laughs> like this is sounding more like a bang bust than an actual trip. <laughs> you went to the same party and they just ignored you all night. Absolutely. Oh, you're that guy from the taxi. Hey, you, <laughs> you, you, kneel- like gross floor. <laughs> you kneeled on the PP stained floor. How are you doing? <laughs> ah, yes. You sat right on my gum. There's <laughs> <laughs> uh, a weird story. We often- still don't have. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, he should have at least offered, like, his lap or something. He could have sat there. <laughs> yeah, in front of five other girls in the taxi yeah, cab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sit on Andrew's lap. Yeah. Oh, I'm at the driver's lap, but yeah, fair enough. Uh, that's oh, safe. Either way. <laughs> yeah, Charlie could push the pedals like he's sitting. Yeah, pret- pretend yeah. like he's driving. Yeah, like, that's a good like, idea. Make vroom vroom noises oh, yeah. Yeah. in front of the girls. <laughs> oh, That would be cute. That's cute. Fun time. Yeah, taxis suck. Well, yeah. Charlie, you'll be happy to know that if you ever visit Turkey, you will only have to rely on taxis because our cab drivers basically beat the shit out of Uber drivers and then the <laughs> presidents just banned Uber. God. So. <laughs> For their safety. There's also the fucking rampant scamming of taxis. Like, there's so many fucking dishonest taxis, especially in other countries, who can just take advantage of tourists. Yeah, they're like a racket. Oh, they will fuck they, you so they hard run, They run crazy shit. I, I watched a, a thing on, like, taxis and how they fucking suck. In other countries, what taxi drivers will do is they'll make really shitty counterfeit money. But because you're foreign, you don't, you're not familiar with it, so you don't know. So they'll just, they'll take you somewhere and they'll they'll be like, oh, that'll be $40 in our currency. So let's say you give them, like, a 50 they will give you your 10 back as a counterfeit and you just won't know it's fake because you don't live there and then you'll try to use it somewhere else and they'll be like, ah, it's fake money. Fuck you. Jesus. Yeah, they'll also yeah. Uh, drive you around in circles because you don't know any better. Yeah, that's common in America. That happens a lot here. Yeah. But it's taxis. I'm, I'm also glad taxis are dying. I'm glad that we are taking power away from certain institutions like with uber since it's crowdsourced for the drivers there's a lot more incentive to actually like please the people that you pick up and actually give a shit whereas with taxis they've got so many licenses and fucking certifications and shit they don't care it's doesn't like it what else are you gonna do the taxi huh? drivers doesn't it just mean the taxi drivers are gonna become new uber drivers though yeah, I, but oh, at the oh. same time, if they're working for Uber, they depend on reviews. Whereas with taxis, you don't look you up don't taxi reviews. Yeah, yeah. You don't yeah true, 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 true. I, so I personally to, at think... At least fake being nice now. I personally think as much as much damage as it does cause and as much negative as there is to it, the reviews are more positive than anything because it means people actually give a shit about the work they do. If there's stringent like conditions on being able to post a review, if you're able to like actually... Mm-hmm. It, it, like with Uber, you have to be a customer of that right. driver to then leave a review, so that's trustworthy. Yeah, I, I think those yeah. situations. If, if more are great. websites, if more websites had like a verified purchase thing, mm-hmm. or or had a thing where even a step beyond where it was like take a photo of the product to prove that you own it, <laughs> that, I think that'd be well. That's what Amazon does. Oh no, that would suck so much if you people just stuck their phones in the drivers' faces like five stars, one star. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was handsome. Some five stars. <laughs> but yeah, I, Wait, you- I, I think accountability for businesses is huge and can really 
turnaround products and service. Doesn't would the doesn't Uber treat its drivers like shit though? I keep hearing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They, they, from what I understand, they they do get treated like shit. So, but then the villain improve. becomes Uber, not the drivers. Yeah. yeah, I I feel like in most institutions there is always some someone getting treated like shit in the in the ladder of things. It's either yeah. the customers. Yeah. Let me or the let me put working. it this way: I would much rather the driver get fucked a bit and then we like lobby and leverage <laughs> Uber to pay them better than have the actual taxi driver be an asshole and a scam and a con artist to have yeah, to make why money. Can't we lobby, why, can't, why can't we lobby the taxi drivers then? I guess we kind of are by choosing to use Uber instead. Yeah, I guess that's kind of lobbying. Yeah, Ooh. fair enough. Do you think, so do you think taxi drivers are going to like change at all in the long term? Do you think they're going to come up with a new business model or do you think they're just going to die out? If they have any... They're just going to get yeah, more and more they, bitter. I think they're just going to keep getting angrier and if they have any like sense of pride, they'll just go down with the ship. They'll just sit out there in front of my old <laughs> university waiting for someone to hop in, but no one ever will. They'll yeah, just nothing fade. but uh, There's just skeletons in the taxi gate. <laughs> humble weeds crossing the road. Yeah. This place is a ghost like, town Please, now. man. Let me show for you around, man. Please, dude. I'll suck your dick. I'll suck your dick. <laughs> How far are you going? Down the to block? Do I can take you. Come on. You, uh-huh. you decide to you decide to give him a chance, and he still does the same thing where he drops you off halfway. <laughs> 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 Tells you to sit on the floor in, in the empty cab. <laughs> so Get on the seats. <laughs> Thanks, Jacko. All right, we can wrap here on a happy note about taxi drivers going Sounds extinct. Sounds good. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this bone not bonus, this main episode, episode 2052. Uh, you can support us over at patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus episodes. There's so many over there. Go check them out. You've got hours upon hours of content to listen to, and they're all good, apparently. Um, Please yeah, review thank us, you. too. Yes, give us reviews if on IMDb, verified Patreon, listeners. fucking Apple Podcast, iTunes, whatever. Anywhere you find the show, we would love a positive review. If you have a negative As review, eh, maybe maybe reconsider. Yeah, keep that to yourself. Yeah, yeah no yeah. one wants to hear what Fuck you off. think, all right? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Ver- verify your listens, too. So, uh, make yeah, sure you sure. post pictures of you listening to the show yeah. with the reviews. <laughs> that, could, that could be a fun thing for people to do. How about for this next week till the next episode, you can put them on the subreddit or Patreon or, where, or in the Discord or wherever. Take a photo of where you listen to the show. Maybe at your work. It's going to be a whole lot school. of like, toilets. Yeah, Just in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, take a take a, a safe for work photo of where you listen to the show. How about that? Yeah, yeah, and one that we can cooking, we can enjoy yeah. wholesomely with grandma, not one where we might have to get a lawyer. <laughs> oh God, that would be so yeah. mean if somebody like the, the the peace sign with their dying grandma in the back, oh, in, like baby. a hospital bed. I was thinking more like, what if they took a photo outside like Andrew's house or something like no, that? Not do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't do that. They yeah. wanted to get our lawyers involved. Take, It'll be take very some wholesome photos of where you listen to the show. How about that? Make sure they're wholesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a yeah, picture outside of nice. Andrew's house with a smile on your face. We'd love to know. Right, thanks, everyone. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Don't, don't Bye. actually Bye. come to my house. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>